Well, hello, hello. So I hope that you have been anticipating the much long-awaited tutorial that I've been wanting to do for you all, right? Who am I? I'm Pastor Garlinda Price, and you already know, maybe know me from my channel, but if not, it's an honor to meet you. I'm excited that you're here with me on today. So I want to give a shout out to all of my fellow creatives, and I hollered today because I listened to Diva Style's video, and she said I'm known as the pastor. I love, <laughs> I love it, right? So I am an ordained pastor. My husband and I pastor Common Ground Ministry. So I invite you to listen to some of our videos over on our on my ministry playlist. I mean, I believe that the Lord will bless you in the sharing of his word because he blessed me to be an encourager, a motivator. So what I was sharing um, when I first did one of my earring videos last week, right, was that I've been a um, designer for years, right? I owned my first business, my very first business at 19, I'm 51 now, um, was jewelry and making earrings and selling earrings. And that's how I made money through college. That's how I made my money and supported myself when I had moved to D.C., um, of course, I had real jobs, too, but I always had a creative side. And so any of you, even if you have a full time job or you own a business, you understand how important it is as a creative to have that outlet because it helps you to think. It helps you to focus. It helps you to have clarity. Um, when I'm designing jewelry, it gives me peace because sometimes namaste in real estate. You think about doing some ugly things to people, right? And yes, I did just say I'm a pastor, but that doesn't mean you don't want to slap people every now and again, right? Even Jesus kicked over tables and told the Pharisees about themselves. <laughs> so anyway, super excited today's tutorial. What we're going to be doing is I'm going to show you how I make straight lines. Um, I don't know even know what gave me this idea, but what happened was I was like, I want to put some lines on jewelry. And I noticed that some people have the straightest hand, right? They could have been surgeons. Y'all might see my baby in the background. <laughs> they could be surgeons, right? Their hand is so straight. Well, mine isn't. After years of doing hair, I just don't have a straight hand, right? And so I think it's, you know, because probably it's a gift of flexibility in the wrist as well. So I'm going to show you today how I got these lines on the hearts. Um, this is a set of hearts as well. And with this one, it took a little bit longer because that paint was kind of like, meh. It didn't want to do right, right? It just didn't have any get right in it. Um, I'll maybe show you how to do how I did the triangles. I don't want the video to go too long, but I do have a couple set aside so I can share with you um, how I got the lines. So we're going to do the tutorial. I was hoping to be able to do it where it was flat down and you could look down on my workstation. However, what had happened was the uh, microphone on my phone broke. So that meant that I couldn't, people couldn't hear me when they called and I couldn't hear them if I called them, but I could still text and email. I just couldn't talk. So my phone just came yesterday. It took about 15 hours to download all the pictures and the files. Who, how many people do I know that it takes 15 hours to download some photos? What do I have photos of, right? At least that's in my mind. Like, what are we doing over here with all this time? But anyway, so I haven't had a chance to finish setting it up. So we're going to do it from here. But let me just show you. So the ones I'm wearing today are not the lines. I'm just going to show you what I'm wearing today. I thought they were super cute. So I did these with... Um, let me clean off the camera right here. So I did these um, just with finger dots. So I put paint on the end of my little thing, on the end of my ring finger. And I just dotted it all over it. And the back I just did um, like some squiggles and did some glitter paint so that's pretty simple I may do a tutorial on how I did the um, the dots and the finger paint I might use the end of a pencil but I'm almost sure that was my finger so anyway super cute and the other thing I'm going to show you is I want you to stay tuned to the end you can skip past it if you say girl I don't want to hear all that right but I'm going to show you the next three tutorials that I'm going to be doing I don't have a timeline for them but my goal and the schedule that I set for myself is to do videos every Tuesday and Thursday whether that's ministry related or creative related that's my content calendar for myself don't y'all start sending me no ugly stuff in case I don't make the time right we got to have grace with each other right so anyway, that's my goal. Tuesdays and Thursdays, that's the commitment I made to myself. But look at the finished product of the ones we did with the lines. Are they not the cutest? Like, save the llama drama for your mama. Oh my God, they are so cute. And so what I did was I took a wooden base. And on the wooden base, um, I had a color. It was already a solid color. I, I don't think I liked the color. I think it was brown. So I'm also going to do a tutorial of what it looks like when you make a design you don't like it, love it, gotta have it, like Cold Stone, right? 
and you want to paint over it because it costs us a lot of money for our art materials and our art supplies not that it's expensive but you don't want we don't want to waste anything right we want to get value from everything we invest our money in and so I'm talking about us as creatives and you know create creative people and artists and so I paint over things that I don't love right because I'm like well I don't want to throw it away it still has value let's paint over it. and so I'm going to show you um, how I'm going to paint over this earring in a tutorial because I just didn't like how it came out I don't know what it, I don't know what I was thinking about anyway I thought I was doing something cute so anyway I just have to finish the back of this one but I think that they are so cute this one has the triple thick glaze on it um, Diva Styles was saying she hadn't tried the triple thick glaze before and so what I do is I pour I just hold the bottle upright I let it run all over the piece and then I let it settle and I move it around with the end of a brush I'll do a tutorial on that when I go to gloss some of the earrings that I finished I'll show you what I use um, I have not done resin as a gloss because it dries really quickly which I don't have an issue with but it makes the earrings heavier and I want my earrings to remain lightweight so I do have, love how Latasha Edmonds does the resin gloss over but I really want them to, to remain lightweight and the triple thick glaze gives you a really beautiful shine right you can't keep working with it once you pour it and you let it spread and you let it settle you have to let it completely dry for 24 hours because if you don't it's going to get cloudy and there's no way to fix it once it clouds over so that's what I would encourage you is to pour it on a, a thick amount depending on the size of your piece let it settle out and then once it settles out you can move it around a little bit with the end of a brush you don't want to overwork it because it will get air bubbles you want to pop the air bubbles while you're working with it again we'll do that tutorial later on but anyway I just want to show you that this is what I made with the paint these are just solid wooden bases I haven't finished the backs um, so that's the back of them not cute at all right the llamas are stickers I got them in the sticker section at um, Hobby Lobby our Hobby Lobby is still open, I believe. Our Michaels is still open. Too. I haven't been in about three weeks, but the last time I did go, they were you were, you could go in. And um, a lot of our big box stores here in North Carolina are open. They're just limiting the number of people that can go in the store any single time. So let's get started. I'm talking too much. But anyway, sharing the llamas again. These are flat wooden bases. I'm going to show you how to do the stripes. The llamas are stickers. There you go. They're going to be earrings. One more thing, these could also be pendants, these could also be hair bows, these could also be buttons, these could be post earrings, they could be hanging earrings, they could be statement pieces to go with the rest of an earring. So whatever you decide to do with them, multiple things that you can do with those. And then, last but not least, I shared these with you last week when I was doing an earring trial, and I have another earring trial for you this week, we'll do on Thursday. And um, this was where I was messing with the straight lines, and so we're gonna get straighter today. Um, I tend to mess with stuff after it's already done I should have just left it alone so let's get started so just to share with you I have some pre-painted pieces right so I have pre-painted pieces the Mickey heads for anyone that loves Mickey Mouse and screams that was an earring that I made that broke that's how I ended up back in the bag but those were like something I had gotten from AC Moore Michaels and when I went back they didn't have any more I was so disappointed but they took all the Disney stuff out of the Michaels store here so that's why I couldn't get them anymore but anyway so these are just random bases that I've already painted and they're in preparation of becoming earrings, right? And so here's some that we're going to work with today, right quick, just for the tutorial. Again, you can speed past the time. I don't go about editing my videos because I just don't have time to do that, right? I, like I said, I own a, a business, I own a real estate company, I have a ministry, I have a family, I'm a mom of two teenagers, an amazing husband shout out to Pastor Marvin Price Jr. Love me some him. And we have a puppy named Bolt. He's four years old. So I, what we, what we do on the video is what is at the end of the video. I don't try to edit it all out. So let's get started. So what you're going to need just to give you the supplies that you're going to need is you're going to need some scotch tape. Now this is not the frosted tape. This is the crystal clear tape, right? So it's gloss finish, transparent tape. That's what you need. I haven't tried it with the frosted tape, but stuff tends to thick, stick to the frost tape that maybe doesn't stick to the regular tape so I don't use that you're gonna need um, any wooden bases that you've already pre-painted unless you want to do it on a finished wood piece that hasn't been painted yet you could but I'm not I haven't done that you're gonna need any paint colors of your choice I don't use a specific brand of paint or have a specific paint that I like but in the event a paint company the Dollar Tree Michaels or AC Moore y'all wanna give me a, um, a contract I'll talk about your paint your product to the Lord comes back right <laughs> 
<laughs> but anyway, so these are, I just use random colors that I love. Now, I would say my favorite kind of paint or my favorite brand of paint is the Americana by Deco Art because it just seems to have a better um, glades of how it goes on. It has better coverage. I do love that. I do love the Craft Smart. And I think Diva Styles is saying that she ordered these online for a pickup through the line at Michael's for 63 cents. That is a steal. Do you hear me? So this is a little thing of earrings, but I'm going to share that on another video. We're gonna I'm going to show you some designs I made. So let's get started. The paintbrushes I'm going to be using, I'm going to move that out of the way, um, are just these. And what you want to use is an angled brush or either a straight brush, right? So these are any of the random brushes that I'm going to be using, but notice they have a straight edge. They're not fluffy. These are the straight edge brushes, right? And why that meant, it doesn't necessarily matter since you're going to have tape on there, but this one's even a little too fluffy. I'm not going to use that one because it's not going to give me the straight line that I want. So I'll put her up. But notice that this is a flat, flat head, flat shape brush. I'm not going to use that one either only because I have these three. Um, and it's going to depend on the size of your item. So let's note, you want to get good coverage. So if I'm painting on the heart, right, and I want to get a straight line, I'm going to go with a straight edge towards whatever shape, whatever line I'm doing, whether that's diagonal, or whether that's horizontal. And so that's why I think it's important to have a straight edge or an angled brush. Okay. Sorry about that. I'm still working today, right? <laughs> sneaking away from real estate but when you sell real estate your independent contract you can do that so let's get to taping so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you what size piece of tape I'm gonna tear off so I'm gonna tear off a piece probably longer than what I need because there's nothing worse than tearing off a piece of tape and then it's too short okay so now that I've torn it off I'm gonna I'm just gonna do it straight down because I want to keep it simple okay and so on each side of the heart I'm going to show you what I'm doing. So I applied the tape and I just said, okay, I want my line to be over here, but I think I'm going to move it in closer. Because I really want the line to be closer to the point of the heart. So you're going to put your tape wherever you want, wherever you want your line to show up. It's going to make sense when I go put the other piece. But you want it to be even on each side, right? So however, whatever dimension you tape over here, see how we have this little piece that juts out right there? You want that same amount of space over there so your line makes sense when you remove the tape. And you're going to be removing the tape when it's semi-damp, okay? Don't let it dry. I did that on a piece that I had already painted and it peeled the paint off, and so I had to go back over it. So, putting the next piece of tape on, it will stick to your fingers, which is a little weird, but okay. So notice that, see how it's not straight, going straight down, it goes in a bit of an angle, so I'm going to move the tape over. So the good thing about working with tape is that you just move it over a little bit. Lift it up. And put it back down. So I'm going to show you in a second. Be patient, I know. So what I noticed about this heart is that it's not even either. So I'm gonna move the other side over a little bit as well. So I tend to be a little bit anal about stuff because I'm a Virgo. I'm not calling other Virgos anal, I'm just saying how I am. So I tend to want things to be perfect. If I'm doing a line, I want it to look like a line, okay? So I'm not gonna be anal about it today. So there you go. So here it is, now we have the one line here that we're gonna do straight down the middle. And what I did was I picked colors that would show up well on the computer so that you can see what it looks like. And guess what? You can always paint over this if you don't like it. So here are my paints, they're already in the palette. I'm gonna pick up the paints, you can see it. It has some water off to the side, you can't see, so I did wet the brush a little bit, just so it has some slip to it. So now you know that you can always watercolor your paints out if you wanna add a little bit of water, but I want a pretty solid color. I am a fan of teal. Like everything about the beach calls my name. It screams my name. Are you more of a cabin person like the woods and yetis? <laughs> or do you love the beach and the dolphins and all that stuff, right? I always think about yetis. Oh, I'm sorry. I always think about yetis when I go through the woods. So what we're going to do is we're just painting down the line that we put the tape, put, um, the tape on each side of. So all I'm doing 
it's just painting straight down and so what you're going to want to do is like put a healthy amount on there but you don't want to keep messing with it because then the paint's going to come off and you just pretty much will be going over and over and again so look all we did was paint on the part that we left open in between the tape i'm going to let that dry for a minute and we're going to tape up another one okay the one we're going to tape up next we're going to do a hor a horizontal y'all have grace this is my first time doing a tutorial online um, but if we have any bad comments, I'm going to just delete them, right? <laughs> but anyway, I'm just joking. Have grace, okay? So we're going to take a small one. We're just going to take a little small tab. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a horizontal one across here. And you can use these to make, um, like, they don't have to just be a post earring. You could glue this onto another earring, right? This way. You could use it as a dangle to make a hanging earring that way. You could put it at the bottom. You could put it somewhere down here to make it look like that. So you can use these as components. That's the word I was looking for. You don't necessarily have to, just because you're painting it and it's going to be a painted post, doesn't mean that that's all you can make with the earring. These can be earring components and bases for other earrings and for other designs. Okay? And this will even be a cute little necklace as well. You want to put it on a chain make something cute and inexpensive and make multiples of them so I have the tape on and take it off so you can see it again I have the front right that's what you're looking at I'm taking the tape and I'm just gonna put the tape on where it's horizontal okay so see how I have half of a tape and half of it not taped like a half moon but again I want it to be straight because now once you paint it you don't want to have to go back over it because it's going to be harder to get it straight when you tape it but I'm going to show you how to clean it up at the end okay I hope that's what I'm going to do so we're going to use the peach color because I really want the colors to show up online so we're just going to start painting and I will go ahead and do the edges since you're Sorry about that. Go ahead and do the edges since we're already over here. And you're going to repaint the back anyway. So don't worry about it. Don't be a perfectionist about it. It doesn't matter also if you paint on the tape because we're going to be lifting the tape up. Okay. So we're going to sit this one to the side. And we're going to let it dry. We're going to bring back the other one we just did. I just got paint on my desk. Luckily it's acrylic paint, right? <laughs> anyway. So I'm going to dry this um, brush off. I'm just dipping the brush in water to clean the paint off. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take the one that we just did and we're going to add another coat to it, okay? Now, y'all, since this is my first time doing this online, if it doesn't come out right, just remember what I just said. I don't edit. So we just, it's just not going to do right, right? So anyway, so what we're going to do is we're going to do another coat of paint. Now, you can layer upon layer upon layer of paint if you want to it's totally up to you but I like a really great saturation of color that's just how I am and so notice that now the brown is pretty well covered so we're gonna let it paint I also notice that it's not gonna be perfectly straight but what we can't do is be perfectionist about artwork because we can make it look like whatever we want and the only person that knows it didn't come out looking like you wanted it to look is you right no there's not some little person in your head saying y'all that wasn't what she was trying to do right <laughs> it's only you know what it's supposed to look like so let's pick up the red one and then we're going to do one more piece because i don't want the video to be too long but i'm picking up the red one we just did i'm adding another layer of paint to it so while i'm working on the next piece this can be drying okay There we go. So again, it doesn't matter if it gets on the tape or not because we're going to be pulling the tape up. Now, once you pull the tape up, you're going to allow the piece to dry. You're not going to try to handle it and work with it again. You're going to need to give it about 30 minutes. To me, I would give it 30 minutes to an hour before I go add more tape to start doing more lines. And I tend to work on things in phases, right? Because like I had to do my real work before I got on here to do this video, right? Had to do my real estate work. And so in doing that, I said, well, 
that's that's how my day goes most days so if I'm paint if I'm cooking I may paint some things if I'm in between taking a break from real estate I may paint some things so the next piece we're gonna work with is the blue piece I'm gonna try to tape across the screen so you can see it and we're just gonna pick a design to add a few stripes to this one okay so I just put the tape across here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to do two sections of stripes on here for us to see okay so I put one piece on Doesn't matter if your fingerprints get on I mean it's gonna happen because it's tape. I'm gonna put another piece across here. So now we have two pieces and you don't want to rub it down too much because I think that's where I made the mistake on one of my pieces. I rubbed the, um, the paint the tape down too much and it peeled the paint up that I already had on there which it was easy to go back and fix but I mean that's takes time away from when you could be doing something else having to go back and touch something up right and then we're going to put a, a small piece across the top we should do blooper reel sometimes right <laughs> the earring is just stuck to the keyboard <laughs> oh my gosh so anyway so across here so now you notice that we're going to have three different layers. Okay, so I only put out four colors of paint. So let's see what we're going to choose from. Let's choose from a pink that we have. Okay, so again, this is what it's looking like. So we're going to have two stripes right here. Okay, so I'm going to use a pink shade. And then what we're going to do is we're going to paint across here. So this particular pink is the Craft Smart paint, and so you notice that it doesn't have as great a coverage just like the other colors, but I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit of purple paint in there to give it a marble look because I want it to dry really well where we can show some stripes at the end, okay? And you can mix your paints, you know, think about that. You can make any colors that you want. What's incredible is that, you know, with paints, you can customize it. You can make it whatever you want. And what I encourage you to do is make one of a kind jewelry. And that way you don't have to worry about people stealing your ideas and stealing what it is you do. Because I hear that a lot. But whenever you make something look complex, although it's easy to you, people can't steal it because they're not going to be able to duplicate it, right? And so they may try, but I mean... If you don't have the anointing, what are we going to do, right? <laughs> but anyway, and so um, put, I'm just mixing purple and pink across here. And I think I'm going to do something different at the stripe up top. So let's mix the blue and, well, the teal color we had and the melon color that we had across the top. I'm just trying to get my brush clean, but I'm going to switch brushes right quick. Give me one second. How's y'all's day going? I actually thought today was Wednesday. I think because we're all work I've always worked from home I mean at one point I had a real estate office but it was a waste of money because the agents did not use the office um, I just found myself paying for stuff that wasn't being used and so I always get to work from home but how are you enjoying working from home if that's something you've been doing okay so we let that starting to dry already so now let's add some teal to our other open space up here and I did go ahead and do the sides while I was over here. You don't have to. I mean, because you could always, I noticed that Joyce McTeer, um, I saw somebody else do it too, but I can't remember who it was. Um, some other creatives is they outline their jewelry with a marker. I haven't tried that yet. Um, Cause I, like I said, I don't have a steady hand. So, you know, however you want to paint your sides, but definitely finish up your sides and make it look good. So I'm going to add also just a little bit of peach since we're talking about mixing colors. And you don't want to do that too much because if you end up mixing it too much, you'll end up with a muddy brown if these colors don't go well together on the color scale. So here we go. I think I'm going to do one more swipe of pink across the bottom here. 
to see what we end up with. And the cool part is this is like tie dye, right? You know how, and you can always skip past this if it's taken longer than you have or come back and watch it when you have more time. But what I love about the look of tie dye, although I haven't done tie dye, I plan to do some. I did it when I was younger. Um, is you never know what you're going to get. And I, I just think that's so cool. So again, I'm just adding a little bit more purple and make sure I have good coverage over here. It's okay to paint over the tape, like I mentioned. And then, <laughs> y'all don't want to know what I just almost did. So I thought that the little plastic container over there holding my finished earrings was the warden. So I was getting ready to dip it in there, <laughs> dip it in there for water. Okay, so I'm going to go over the top piece one more time because I just want a little bit more teal, a little bit more of that ocean blue. swoop okay so there we go so we have our three pieces done I think that's gonna be enough only because it's we're at 25 minutes and I don't want this video to be too long but I'm super excited so we're gonna reveal the first one right I really wanted to paint it one more time but we can always go back and touch it up so let's reveal dun, bum, bum, bum. so that's one And that's two so that's how you get your straight lines it's just with tape okay and so now what we want to do is let it dry and so what you could do is you could make this a broken heart pattern if you're good enough to cut your tape up and lay it out how you want you could do um, just different designs also if you don't like the hole in that heart because this particular batch of hearts that I bought had a hole in them you could always cover that up with a rhinestone or um, a sticker or some other design you know that you want so you could always do that any kind of way. I'm going to paint this peach one one more time because to me it didn't get great coverage. Again, that's the Craft Smart paint that I don't absolutely love. But it's so inexpensive that um, I buy it because it just you just have to know that, okay, it's going to take you a few more layers, right, to get what you want. And then after you cover it up with the um, triple thick it has such a it has a beautiful gloss just like all the other paints it's just initially it's going to take you a little bit longer so what I did was I added just another coat on here so we could get good coverage on here so when I go to pull it off it'll look good okay so let's give that a minute to dry and while we're waiting on that to dry I'm going to go ahead and pull the tape off the other one. And keep in mind, depending on what you're working with, the tape will stick to stuff. I mean, because it's tape, right? So be mindful of how you lay your item down that you're working with. So let's start from the bottom. And this is where we're supposed to have two different stripes on our piece. So here we go. That's number one doesn't matter which direction you pull the tape off in. I'm going to show you right quick how you can clean your lines up. I'm trying to see if I touched that and messed the paint up. I don't think so. Okay. Did I? No. So let's reveal the last one. And if it's messed up, again, have grace. You get the concept. Perfect. Okay, so notice how you have your straight lines all you did was have to put down some tape right and with the tape you ended up getting the straight lines that you want and now you can do whatever else you want but let me show you how to touch it up in the event you still need to touch up your paint or mess with the paint okay sorry I had to fix something Okay, so this one may get a little messy and us taking the paper off only because, you know, I just painted it, but I want to go ahead and reveal it before we get off camera and make sure I have a good grasp on it on the sides. So, Ooh. okay, perfect. So, there we go. That one came out super cute. So, of course, you can still go back and touch it up because, again, you know, notice across the edging how up here on the red the peach got up there just a little bit so you could go with a little dot tool and just add some red paint right there that's what I would recommend I wouldn't recommend trying to take the line up again to match up the peach 
But notice up there, and I'm not going to do it now while it's drying because it's not dry yet, but up along the edge where you see kind of the wave where the tape was, you could get closer to the edge right there once this piece is drier with your flat edge brush that I was sharing with you about. So with your angled brush and with your straight edge brushes, brushes you could touch. So let's touch up the purple one. And I'm going to try to show you that on camera. It's a little hard only because we're working upside down. But I want to show you that we could add more paint to this. And I really shouldn't mess with it. But I just want to show you the technique of it in case you need to touch up your lines. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add just a little bit more paint to the purple and the pink section. But I'm going to dot it this way. Because I don't want to mess up my line. But notice that I'm using a smaller brush. You don't want to go using a wide brush because then when you go to touch it up, you're going to mess up the lines because you're going to go outside the lines. So I'm just going to brush straight down. I'm going to brush straight down. And I want to get close to the line. So let me see if I can move the keyboard to show you what I'm talking about. So right in here, I'm just getting my angle of my brush and I'm touching straight down just because I wanted the line to be a little bit cleaner, right? I'm going to flip it upside down. I didn't really get that close to it. Let me get close to it right quick. And because the purple got on the blue a little bit, like right there, Kind of hard to see, but the purple got on the blue just a smidge. You can always go back and touch that up. So let's touch up right along the I'm oh, sorry. Right along the line. We're just cleaning up the line from the inside, okay? And <clears throat> that's how you go about getting a straight line. So this adds so much dimension and detail to your work. You can do all kinds of lines. You can do all kinds of stripes. I do want to show you how to do a triangle. I'm just going to tape it. I will paint it, but I don't know that it's going to show up because... Oh, well, let me use a different one. I don't have to use... Last thing, then we're going to go, okay? But, of course, you know you can always skip past this or you can leave me and say, Hey, Garland, I got to run. Let's tape one in a triangle. Not a triangle. Uh, um, what is it? Which one are we talking about? Let's tape one in a. Oh. <clears throat> I guess it is a triangle, but it's a long triangle. Let me show you how we, how to do one like this, okay? Let me get a different piece of it. Trying to pick one that'll show up well for you. Well, I guess we could, we'll just use the back of this one, okay? Because I'm going to repaint these anyway. So before we go, I'm going to show you what that project is going to look like. So what I did was, let's say we want our triangle to be halfway down here, meaning this part won't have the triangle. It'll still have some color left up there. So there'll still be color up here, but we're going to do a triangle down in here, okay? And I didn't paint this base, so what we're going to do is we're going to use teal so to show it really well, okay? Also, I know I can get good coverage with that paint. So now what we want to do is we want to put the points together just like we would to make a triangle. I'm just going to match up the corners. Give me a second. So you're going to match your points of the tape up at the top, okay? Before I lay it down, notice that, see the tape looks like a triangle? So all I did was match the points up. I'm not trying to make it perfect, although you do want to line it up, so because I am a perfectionist. I am trying to make it perfect, right? <laughs> I'm going to go back and just straighten this one up a little bit just because I want it to be an even triangle when we go to do it. So match up your points, match up your corners. There we go. 
So now we have it matched up and that's how you would do a triangle. So you would put your tape at a slant, put the other side of the tape at a slant, match the points up here. Now if you wanted it to go all the way to the top and you wanted your triangle to start up here, you just do longer pieces of tape, right? I just didn't do longer pieces of tape. I'm going to get some of the cloudiness. I just am wiping off the, um, the base that we use because it seemed a little dry to me. So I'm just going to wet it so it'll take the paint. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a wider brush so that we can get more coverage and speed it up since we're near the end of the video. And I hope this has been helpful to you just to open up some design ideas of how you can add dimension, you can add color, you can add uniqueness to your work, something other people aren't doing, right? Because I always, this is a business tip that I share with people when I coach them in business, right? Is whatever you see the crowd doing, do the opposite. Whatever I've ever seen people doing when I own salons, when I design jewelry, when I opened the real estate office, whatever everybody else was doing, I did the opposite, right? And that has made all the difference, right? I know that's a Robert Frost poem, right? He took the road, let's travel. So we're going to take our, a larger brush because I want to get great coverage. And we're going to begin painting just like we did before. I don't know how... Um, what's his name did this what was the man with the afro Bob Ross he was one patient dude right <laughs> because you want it to be perfect when you're showing people how to do it but you know you're working in reverse so anyway the next time I'll be able to work down because my phone is like all set to go other than I just ah! other than I just need to um, get it set up some more so let me clean that off a little bit cleaned off thank God for acrylic paint and let's keep going so let's add another coat some water had rolled down so let's add another coat of paint because we are working on our triangle let me not get so close next time What are you all designing? And thank you for those of you that replied to me about whether or not you like Etsy or um, Big Cartel. Is it called Big Cartel? In terms of, I'm also going to paint the bottom, the edges, although the other side's already painted. Again, I'm going to do a tutorial on how to cover up stuff you don't like. I'm going to show you um, our next tutorial projects. You're going to be super excited I don't know which one I'm gonna do first maybe you could tell me in the comment section when you see it so let me clean off that one little piece of paint I just got up there and then we're gonna reveal this although it's not dry yet because um, it doesn't have to be perfect although I'm a what perfectionist okay so this one may have a little bit of paint up top and so how will we fix that well considering the fact it has a charcoal gray base color right up in here. I would just paint over that with charcoal gray. So that's why I'm saying it's really not a big deal if you end up making mistakes in your work because you can go back and touch it up at the end. Okay? You can go back and touch it up. Nobody's going to know. So let me see if it is dry enough for us to peel the tape off. We're going to peel the tape off. Okay? Y'all know where I got that from? The Little Mermaid. Introducing King Titan. I think that was a little fish when he introduced King Titan. But anyway, how cool is that? Oh my god! Right? So think about all the cute stuff. And of course, it's not perfectly straight because we're on camera, right? And although I want to be perfect, it's not. But you would just touch up and clean up the top with the same base color you already have. And you could do just that. If that was your simple pattern, oh my gosh, how cute would that be? So just to wrap up what they look like, that's how you're going to get you some straight lines is using your scotch tape. Use the clear tape, not the frosted tape. And I don't know about the Dollar Tree tape. You may want to get a good brand tape, okay? Because I've, I've tried to tape packages with Dollar Tree tape and it can be a little frustrating. So anyway, how cool is that? Yay me, right? Yay us. <laughs> I like how it turned out. I'm going to show you the next three projects that we're going to be working on. I'm going to let you tell me which one we should do first. Um, I think they're super simple in terms of 
the base of them but I'm really excited about how one of them came out one of them I did Sunday um, before I read my Bible on Sunday let me clean up I'm not going to clean up anything let's bring these over so this is a celestial pair that I created right there you go so I wanted something they're not um, I haven't put the top coat on these yet so they don't have the triple thick on them yet right but I wanted a celestial design and so that's what I created with these but guess what these had a different design on them they were like this earring right so it had a design on it that I just did not like but I wanted a round celestial design pair of earrings and I didn't want to throw my bases away because I was like okay just because I don't like it doesn't mean I can't turn it into something else so I turned it into these celestial designs I will show you what they come out looking like once I get the triple thick on them and get the earring hooks on them when I say that I impressed myself well let's let's we'll save those for last right so these I'm gonna have to hold because I haven't glued the bases on I mean the little pieces on them yet but this is a C design right so I, ha I got into this beach mindset this beach theme over the weekend and so I found these they're not glued on yet these little um, they're like buttons and you can get them they come in a pack I got them at AC Moore now the AC Moore is closed you can find them at Michaels I cut the back off so I can't show you what they look like but I will show you what they look like in another video so you can go look for them they're not beads and they're not flat back and they have a little button hook on them so you can cut it off right that's all I did was cut them off but look so I'm gonna drop them down so you can see them but what I did was I created the beach scene first and so I want to do a tutorial showing you how I made the galaxy earring and I want to do a tutorial showing you how I made the beach earring and then this one is going to be finished after I gloss it and after I glue the little seashell accoutrements on it and I'm going to gloss it first because when I go to glue the seashell accoutrements on it it'll make it look 3D or 2D like it stands out right is it 2D or 3D I don't know y'all know y'all tell me so the last one and I want you to let me know of the three which one you want me to do the next tutorial on okay so introducing oh, I like palm trees are gangster even though they could tend to look like another kind of leaf it's not that these are palm trees right so I did an ombre base and so I, I had in mind when I got ready to make this design I wanted it to look like a sunset so I did the sunset and I'm and as I did it I was like this need it needed something because I was like it's just too plain as a sunset although the Lord's sunsets are beautiful enough I was like I really want to do palm trees I literally watched a video on Sunday of how this lady made palm trees and it was how to design a sunset theme or a beach scene for beginners and I'll see if I can share the link to her video um, if I can find I should be able to find it in history right I learned how to do palm trees like that right so I'm gonna do a video teaching you how to create this earring and how to create the palm trees matter of fact I'm not gonna share her video to show you how to make the palm trees because I want you to watch my video right and then I'll share the link on how she taught to make the, the palm trees but I'll be able to show you simple enough okay so super cute and so which ones do you want do you want a sunset tutorial with dancing palm trees do you want a tutorial on how to make the celestial earring with the glitter accoutrement included or do you want to know how to make the beach scene let me see if I can pick this up with the beads without them falling off or do you want to know how to make the beach scene let me know which one you want to make in the comments section and that's the one that I'll do next I pray that today was a blessing to you it was an honor to teach you on today um, we're getting ready to end it but I just want to show you again this is what we taught today how you can get straight lines using nothing other than scotch tape and some paint and any brushes that you have on hand they don't have to be those angled brushes if you don't have access to that use whatever brush you have on hand because you're gonna tape over the you're gonna paint over the tape anyway right so you don't have to be so methodical about it but you do want to have a good coverage notice how that needs another layer of paint so it'll look like the color that it is and if you paint it and you don't like it paint over it okay you can always redesign it so I've prayed it today was incredible for you as it was incredible for me and now Go make you some cute llama drama earrings for your mama. Or go make you some cute butterfly earrings. So God bless you all. You all have an incredible day. And I will see you next time. So my next video, God be willing, will be on Thursday. And I'll be doing a earring of what I made. So you can see some jewelry that I've designed. And hopefully by then you would have let me know what tutorial that you want. And we will get to working on that as well. So again, God bless you. 
I'm Garlinda Price, and I'll talk to you all soon. Bye.